Yeah. Oh, perfect. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about Git today. So Git is a version control system for managing changes and tracking changes in your computer files. I want to do a quick poll of who uses Git. Great. Okay. So a vast majority of you. That's awesome. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just going to explore four very very basic Git commands: uh, Git init, Git add, Git commit, and Git push. And I'm going to show you what Git does: the objects and text files. Git creates, so we're going to get under the hood. Um, so for demo purposes, I've come up with this really simple project. I have a folder on my computer called recipes, and I've added two recipes to that folder for cookies and muffins. So how Git works is Git, Git is built on a graph data structure. So all that means is there's objects and some of them are connected to each other by links. So what Git does is it takes this very simple file structure, a folder with two files in it, and it represents it as objects. Uh, it represents folders as tree objects, and it represents files as blob objects. It connects some of these objects together via a uh, key value data source. So it actually hashes the contents of each object, and that will generate both its folder and file name. So I can hop onto my computer. I have this really simple, uh, folder called recipes. I can't blow up on the left at all, but uh, it says cookies and muffins, and there's my cookie recipe. So what I'm, the first get command I'm going to run is get init. So I'm going to initialize my uh, project as a get repo so I can start tracking changes. Oops. All right, so all that did was add a dot .git folder in my project, like under recipes. So now I have this dot .git folder, and within this dot .git folder, um, it's going to contain all that's required to configure Git, as well as has a folder in there called objects. So that's where it's going to store those tree and blob objects. Right now, this folder contains nothing because I actually haven't told get about any of my files. So the next command we're going to run is get add, and we're going to add the recipes. So everything outside this dot get folder is called a working copy. So my the files I'm actually going to change, like the cookies and muffins recipe, I call this my working copy. And then what's ever stored in the dot get is responsible for the history and tracking changes. So let's add, um, I'm going to get into my folder. I go get status, you'll see that I have two untracked files, cookies and muffins. I will add the cookies file, and you'll see that what happened was get added an object. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, but there's an object on the left-hand side that is stored, there's the folders called uh, 1E, and inside there, there's a file with a hash as the file name. Um, so I can expose what's in that file by running this command cat file, and I'll pass it, pass it its hash. I actually don't need to pass the whole hash because it's unique enough that Git knows what object I'm talking about. So you can see that that object refers to the cookie recipe. Um, so what Git does when you add a file, it creates an object that compresses the content of that file, and then it hashes the content of that file. It takes the two first characters of that hash makes it the folder name in the object file, and then the remaining hash becomes the file name. I can do the same thing uh, for muffins. And then I will create another object. These are blob objects. And I can show you uh, the contents, what that object is, by running again, cat file. I don't have to pass it the whole hash just because it's unique enough. And this is my muffins recipe. So when I add cookies and muffins, what's happening is Git is creating two blob objects, and the file name is a hash of its contents. Uh, the second git command I'm going to run is uh, git commit. So right now, I have these two changes to be committed, two new files. So I'm going to commit this. Say so this is my initial commit. And now three things are happening. Git is creating two more objects. One of them is going to be a commit object, and the other one's going to be the tree object. So we'll see what those look like. This 
So this is actually, um, oh, that was the wrong one. object here. So this is another object that get created and this is stored within this object uh, file within the get.get .get folder. So what this does is it contains my get message and also this tree object. Um, so did I not pass it a it should contain the get message. That's strange. But it does show that I committed it and then it also contains this tree object. So that's going to represent the uh, folder, my recipe folder, so I can get show you what that object contains by passing its hash. And you'll see this is the tree object. And the tree object contains two lines. Each represents one of the files in it, so the two blob objects. And I can grab what is in that file by, again, running this command. So you can see how this graph structure is starting to be built. Um, I have my, if I find my commit object, it has reference to the tree object, which is the folder. Inside there, it has a list of the two files that are contained within that folder. And if I go to that object, I can uh, decompress that, the file and I'll get the contents of that version that's attached to that commit. The other thing that git commit does is it updates the head file um, as well as the reference uh, folder. So the head file just tells you what branch I'm on. The master branch, and if I go into the refs folder it will, and into the master file, it will contain the hash of the commit I'm on. So this, if I were to go and change like the cookies recipe, like if I added another ingredient, like one cup of peanut butter, um, and I went to add that, so it's going to say I've modified cookies. I want to add that it's going to create a new object for my modified version of the cookie recipe. It's not going to delete or modify the other object that it originally created. That's because get objects are immutable. So now I'll have, there's now a new object in my objects folder. that contains the peanut butter um, ingredient. So I can commit this, add new ingredient, and that's gonna do, again, update, it's gonna create two new objects, a new commit object with a reference to the new tree object. The new tree object's gonna contain the new blob object for my, um, my new edited version of my <coughs> recipe. So I'll show this visually, but what happens is, um, I'm still on my master branch, but now my master branch is going to reference the new commit object, and the new commit object is going to have a new tree object because it has the old muffins recipe, but also the new um, cookie recipe, and within that will you, you can find the right version of the file through that hash. The last git command I'm going to do is I'm going to run um, git push. So I'm, I have already created a repository on my GitHub account called Recipes. So I'll add that locally and then I can go git push origin master. And what this does, um, it will take what's locally, all the refs locally, the tags that you saw on my local version and update it on the remote version in GitHub. And then it will also send any new Git objects that are necessary to complete those refs. So then I can also view my history on GitHub that it contains um, all the get objects, all the different files in my initial commit, as well as um, it contains the new ingredient, just in a nicer UI, but these are just representations of the objects within that folder. So in summary, what kind of get does is it's a graph structure of tree and blob objects um, that reference each other through these hashes. And the hash is just a hash of the content of that object. I like to think of commit objects as kind of snapshots of history and time. So you can uh, find uh, your file structure to that commit by referencing the hash of the 
you go to your commit object, it will have a hash of the tree object or maybe a blob object if you only have a file. Um, and then you can find that version of that file um, when you made that commit message. Um, another really important thing to know is that get objects, I said this before, are immutable. So um, they're never deleted and they're never edited. So if you had, if you added an old version of the cookie recipe and you added a new one, the old one's still there. So you can go and find it in your objects folder. But yeah, so hopefully this was helpful. I want to, um, most of this talk was based on an article that I read by Mary Rose. Um, it's really good. It actually explains a lot more Git commands and it does a really good deep dive and she explains it very well of kind of like the inner workings of Git. So I recommend you guys check that out. Thank you.